Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again. As always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. I hope you're enjoying your work week. And if I don't post another video before Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. But I might. We'll don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> hmm. So uh, this comment came across uh, on the YouTube feed. And I thought it was a great idea for a topic. <clears throat> um, subscriber asked, or no, stated that a mechanic should not owe a car payment. And I was like, what a great idea for a video. I said, I'll go ahead and I'll clarify and I'll put it in context, at least to the best of my ability. So should mechanics have a car payment or should mechanics even owe anything towards a vehicle, whether it's used or new? Let's talk about that for a minute. So his thought process, I guess, basically would be like, one of those kind of guys that's a mechanic that knows that he's mechanically inclined, he can fix damn near anything that comes in and out of the shop, and you find a slick deal on a vehicle that you actually kind of like on Craigslist for maybe a thousand bucks, three thousand bucks. You pay for it, wham bam, fix a couple of issues, and drive it as your A to B. I've seen a lot of mechanics do this. I have. I've seen a lot of them drive these beater ass cars that are just tore up from the floor up because it's just them, and as long as it can get them from A to B, they're cool with that. Okay, cool. So if it's just your A to B, and it's your car only as a mechanic, I don't see a problem with that. Until the pros outweigh the cons. So what happens when you're dumping more money into that car that you bought off of Craigslist for a thousand to three thousand bucks, and you're spending and dumping more money into it every single month more than you are a car payment. I've had that happen to me in the past and I've had it happen to me so much that I decided that's it, I've had enough, I'm taking a car payment, whatever my credit score is and whatever APR I get, I'm just gonna accept the fact, try to build my credit and then go from there. That's a poor mentality to have if it's a really high APR and I could tell you because I, owe, I took a loan out for a uh, $10,500 loan on this Mercury Mariner great car. It, was, it had low miles at the time. It had like 60,000 miles on it when I got it. And I put 500 down. So I was taking essentially a loan out for 10 grand at like 28.5% or 28% interest. <whistles> Ridiculous, right? Well, my credit score was shot and I had nothing to help build my credit. Nobody was approving me for anything at the time. And I had no idea how to build my credit up to actually uh, get approved for anything or to make anything happen. And because of my lifestyle, because of my pay at the time, my pay, you gotta remember when I had taken this car loan out, I was making $10 per hour. And being a, a, a man that made some mistakes going through life, we all make mistakes, we all have challenges. Uh, at that $10 an hour, I was lucky to have a job uh, that provided just enough for me to put a roof over the head, food in the uh, tummies of my kids, and pay child support. But it wasn't really like a lot to live off of. So yeah, I had beaters, man. I had a, a 19, what was it, 86 or 87 Honda CRX. I've had uh, a 98 a Dodge Ram 1500 that I got for taking away some debris off of a ranch from a farmhand that uh, ended up working at Chrysler as well. I got that truck for free, so I just had to jump through a few hoops to uh, get the DMV stuff squared away and the smog squared away, but other than that was free. Transmission would later go out. Uh, I did buy a truck uh, from a mutual friend's girlfriend who was selling it for like 1500 bucks, and over three months I was able to give her you know, 500 at a time and she let me have the truck as I was making payments and then when it was paid off, she finally gave me the title, in which case I was able to actually take it to DMV and get all that stuff squared away plus smog. So I've been through my fair share of beaters, guys. I've owned old ass cars that had a lot of problems and whatever, and I would just jump from one to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, until I finally found a good vehicle. One of those good vehicles that I had was a, uh, I believe it was like a 94, 94, 95 um, Jeep Cherokee Sport. Loved that thing, man. I put a lot of time, effort, and everything into that uh, vehicle at the time. And at the time, I worked for a towing company, so I actually had a tow truck like pretty much seven days a week. It was 24-7, man. I was up and down because we worked for AAA. I was up and down all the time in the tow truck, so that vehicle pretty much didn't need to run and take myself to and from work because I had the tow truck. 
So I left it out back and that's pretty much where I started my YouTube channel on was just before I got that job. And I started doing little tiny repairs to it here and there. You know, I did the intake gasket and whatever, notice that the, uh, the headers were cracked in the places that normally cracked, changed those out, notice there was some bolts that were uh, sheared off flush with the head, had to take the head off to get that bolt out once that was extracted, change the head gasket, all the other stuff, the thermostat, the water pump, the belt, the power steering pump, I had a couple of leaks, so I did the valve cover gasket, I ended up doing the rear main seal in the oil pan, just run of the mill stuff, I still had a problem with it running hot, and I lived in a hot climate, so I bought some Napier vents for the hood. I bought a, a, a Ram air intake snorkel kit to put on the side. Whatever I could do to get cold air funneled onto this thing, I was doing, because I just could not figure out why it was overheating. I didn't know if it was a cluster problem or if it was actually that the car was actually overheating from some kind of cylinder head crack. I didn't have money to pay for the cylinder head to get checked out, so all I did was change the gaskets. Maybe that's what it was. There was a problem in the head, I don't know. Those things were damn near bulletproof though. But I did jump through a lot of cheap ass, beat ass cars until I got to a point where I was like, okay, enough's enough. So I sold my Jeep. I ended up, uh, I actually got approved for a, uh, a, a, it would have been sweet, it was like a 2008 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited, and I was stoked, man. Even though it had a 3.8, which is like a gutless engine, I was ready for it. So I went down there, assuming that I only needed 500 down, uh, I ended up selling my Jeep Cherokee the way that it was for like 3,600 bucks, paid a bunch of bills and shit off, had the uh like a thousand bucks left in pocket went down there to drop 500 on this thing and still had 500 to spare that was my plan that was my idea uh, when i got down there they're like oh oh yeah plans have changed uh we need you to go ahead and put like five grand down and i was like dude what in the fuck man i said you gotta be kidding me i i came down here i took the time off of work uh, to do this, to make this deal, because you said it was golden and I only needed 500 down. So I didn't have the five grand down, so I said, all right, peace out, dude. So I left, I looked, I started going on Craigslist looking for anything I can get for a thousand bucks, and that's how I ended up with this Honda. Well, this Honda had an idle air problem. The idle air control valve was all jacked up, couldn't find one on eBay, couldn't find one in the wrecking uh, yard, tried to part store, they discontinued it because Honda reserved the right to stop selling parts within the 10 years after the manufacture date and the aftermarket industry also had 10 years to stop production on that part. So nobody sold it, I couldn't find it, I didn't know what to do, so I had to pay for an illegal smog from an unknown shop. And it cost me like 300 bucks to get done because in California, you gotta have that smog cert. So I did what I had to do to get it smogged, to get it licensed and plated, whatever. Drove it, drove it, drove it. Had to have my head cocked to the side because I was too tall for the car. Pulled the seat out, tried to tack weld the, uh, a bucket seat in it just so that way I had a little bit more headroom. Um, but eventually it, it ran so rough to the point where I had to figure something out. And I thought to myself, well, I, there's no check engine light or nothing like that on, but I, clearly it has a problem. And everyone kept telling me it was idle air control. It was running so rough, I decided to do the water pump and tying belt. So I pulled the tying belt off, did the water pump, tried to put that in, set it to a certain degree. It didn't change it. It didn't. It still ran like garbage. So eventually I said, fuck it. I think I sold it for like 500 bucks to get out from underneath it. Took that 500 bucks, and because I'd been at the dealership at that time for, I think, the betterment of a year, or just a, yeah, I think it was right, right around one year exactly, I went in there, and I just dropped it, dude. I just said, forget it, enough's enough. Dropped 500 bucks on a car, which was the Mercury Mariner, took the freaking car loan and took off and I was just ecstatic. I didn't smoke in this thing. I didn't trash it up. I kept that thing clean. I would wash and vacuum it once a week at work, which they had no problem with us doing. Uh, and then eventually the wife's car would go and her transmission would go out. So I would try to change the uh, solenoid on it because it showed codes for that. I tried to ohm test it. Seemed like the solenoid was bad. So I tried to do the solenoid in this Mazda 5 that we had. Uh, doing the solenoid and putting fresh fluid and filter in it made it worse. So I was like, okay, what the heck did I do? So I started checking it out. I looked at the diagram that I had. I did change out the correct solenoid. I think the problem was though that there was already some clutch slipping and it had gone on for so long that having that fresh fluid in there just made it to where there was nothing for it to grab onto. So now what? So now we're out of vehicle, right? So then I had to go right back into a POS. So 
I gave her the better car, let her have the Mariner, and that's when I ended up uh, getting this job with the rancher, and I ended up taking all of his yard debris off of his property, taking it to the dump, and I think it was like a 10 acre stretch, took it all to the dump, he gave me this car, again, had to go right back through the same exact hoops, had to pay for the freaking illegal smog, had to do all this shit, tried to fix the uh, the misfire issue, which was in the heads, had to grind the valves down, tried to seat it the best that I could because I couldn't afford to take it to a machine shop, one of those things that if you're gonna do head work, try to afford to take it to a machine shop, but I couldn't afford to do that, and I couldn't afford to buy new cylinder heads, so now I was in another pinch. So I went ahead and bolted it all back together and ran it, and you know what? It ran a little bit better, not as good as it could have, but it ran better than it did. And I ran that thing for almost a year. Did firewood, roofing, I did everything with that truck to try to make as much money as I possibly could. And that truck paid for itself tenfold, for sure. And then one day when I'm traveling out to like, it was like two and a half hour, three hour drive to drill, the torque converter slipped. And next thing you know, I got the check engine light on. It's not going anywhere. I pulled off the side of the road, had it towed back to my house, checked it out with a scan tool, I had a torque converter code. And I was like, shit, that's it. I need either a transmission or I need a torque converter. And I'm not trying to stab a torque converter in this thing because I might not fix the problem. And I know I'm going to end up needing a transmission at this point because I just got done dealing with that shit on this Mazda 5. So screw it, I'll sell it. So I sold it for a thousand bucks. And uh, with that money in time, I had built my credit up enough because I had been juggling back and forth working with Lexington Law, which is a great place to go to if you're trying to establish credit with Lexington Law to help build my credit. Uh, ended up, once it was built up high enough, uh, got a couple of, I got a secured card loan, and I think I bought a credit card. And I had enough credit built up to where my FICO score was like at a 670 or 668, or it was pretty high. It was pretty nice for me, because I'd never seen that kind of score since like I was 19. It had been years since I had seen that kind of credit score. So now I'm in a pinch again. We needed a good running vehicle. I had my roofing business was kicking off. I needed a truck. I absolutely needed a truck. I didn't have money to go and just dump, you know, thousand dollars into another piece of crap and have to go through the same exact hoops again. So I just dumped that thousand bucks onto the down payment. And next thing you know, we were out the door with a brand new truck. So we ended up with this 2013 GMC Sierra. I ended up doing my roofing and everything else. Started getting paid, making money again and uh, life's been pretty good. So I, I slowed down the side work, I stopped doing the roofing stuff for a little bit, winter months are coming. Uh, I do post ads every once in a while during the summer and I make a few little bucks here and there but now the Mariner's seat belts in the back, there's like two seat belts that need to be fixed that are in the back that no longer lock in place. So now the Mariner is a safety issue for the kids. So it pretty much became the wife's truck at that point. So until I get those seat belts fixed and everything else, she pretty much rules the roost of the truck. Again, I don't smoke in it, I don't drink, in, I don't do nothing in that thing. That thing is perfect, it's clean. I don't, I don't drink soda, I don't eat food. That truck is an A to B truck only. The Mariner, I tear that thing up, man. I smoke in it, uh, I drink my soda when I'm at lunch in it, I leave cans all over the place, I got food bags all over the place, and once a week I clean it out. So maybe I should treat the Mariner a little bit better than I do, but there's rat piss and shit all over underneath the engine hood. I've had to like tidy up some of the harness where they've chewed on the wires and whatnot. It's really just kind of running into the ground and now it's at like 130,000 miles. So I'm not taking the best care of it that I possibly can. And I do still owe a little bit of money on it, but not very much. I'm hoping to pay that off here in the next two years and be done with it. But that's kind of my situation, what led to me buying cars and why me as a mechanic chose to buy a car. I needed something reliable, something I can rely on every single day to take me to and from work, to take the kids to and from school, to get Heather to and from work. So we're going back and forth. You gotta have a solid means of transportation. And if repairing the vehicle over and over and over every single month or having to dump vehicles every three to six months because the cost outweighs the, uh, the cons of having to get an auto loan, maybe you should consider trying to find a small auto loan. If your credit's shot, does it suck to have to pay a high ass APR? Yeah, dude, and you're gonna be invested for a while unless you're making you know, double payments every month. It's just something that you have to go through if you're in that kind of a position. Hopefully you're not, hopefully you can pay for it cash, but if you can't pay for it in cash and you do have the credit, it helps, man. 
it helps to know that you can make it to and from work without having to worry or stress about which part on your car is going to fail next. Some of my worst oh shit memories were thinking that my car was good to go, I had already fixed a couple things on it, and I would get 100, almost 200 miles down the road, and the water pump would go. Or the, you know, the freaking catalytic converter would be clogged up. Just something. It was always something, man. So I got tired of it. That's why I chose to get a car loan. That's why I have car loans. Now, one day I hope to have them paid off. But when that day comes, I hope these vehicles are still running well enough to the point where I don't have to worry about buying another POS. I've been taking care of both these vehicles the entire time that I've had the loan to try to make sure that I don't have to worry about having to buy another POS later. So that's why I like buying a partially used vehicle from some kind of dealer or you know run of the mill sales lot because it's probably in better condition than a lot of the piece of crap cars that I found on Craigslist. Reason why people are selling their cars on Craigslist is because either A, they're trying to buy something new and they need a down payment and their car's already kind of running into the dirt. B, they know it's a piece of shit and they just want to be out from underneath it and they want to try to convince you, hey man, if you're a mechanic or you're mechanically inclined, should be no big deal and this is a mechanic steal. You'll see that on Craigslist. Mechanic bargain. Mechanic bargain. That's a big two-word statement that they try to trap you in. Why is it a mechanic bargain? Because they know this thing's got problems. It's got problems for days. They're done dealing with it. So they're trying to sell it for as cheap as they can to get out from underneath it. You think it's only one problem until you fix that problem and realize there are 50 other things wrong with this car. That's all I got for this video, guys. Look, I hope you enjoyed the content. Thanks as always for watching. If you run into something like this, leave it down in the comments. Let other people know about your experience. Thanks as always for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Deuces.